Hello friends, we are uh, bigdatahandsome.com. Our website uh, bigdatahandsome.com. You can visit our website. So, so our contact number is nine seven eight nine triple eight nine uh, four two four. If you have any doubts, you can uh, message this in number, or you can send email to support at bigdatahandsome.com. So, and this is our syllabus here. So today is twenty seven, I think. Twenty seven day twenty seven. Uh, we will see dimensional tree reduction algorithms. So we'll see one algorithm that is principal component analysis (PCA). Okay. So our videos, previous videos, you can find it in our uh, YouTube channel, bigdatahandsome.com. If you subscribe to our channel, you will get all the notifications. Okay. So let me start this uh, uh, algorithm. So today we will see principal component analysis. So before that, you need to understand what is dimensionality reduction is. So dimensionality uh, reduction. If I'm just to in also inform like whatever videos until yesterday's session has been uploaded, uh, can you just? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, we have uploaded. Videos, uh, yeah. Here, uh, yeah. So we have uh, uploaded. Uh, the videos for machine learning so you can see introduction to machine learning simple linear multiple linear so this is our syllabus actually so from day one to day three actually we uh, we took uh, statistics and uh, uh, probability and from day four to uh, i think day 14 we covered uh, python completely and then from 15 only we started our uh, machine learning so introduction to machine learning the 15 and uh, simple linear polynomial logistic k neighbors decision tree random forest these are algorithms we have seen uh, before so from yesterday actually we covered uh, association rule a priori and declared i think uh, that was uploaded here so you can see that okay okay so uh, now uh, let me continue okay so we need to understand what is dimensionality reduction is. So dimensionality reduction is not like uh, converting uh, three three dimensional to two dimensional, not like that. So it's just reducing the number of variables in a large data set. So that's what the dimensionality reduction is. So we use some methods to re uh, reduce the number of variables. That's called uh, principal components. Okay. So principal component analysis or PCA is a dimensionality reduction method that is often used to reduce the dimensionality of large data sets by transforming a large data set of variables into a smaller one that still contains most of the information because we, if, if you are going to reduce the number of variables, no, there has some uh, data loss actually. So, but the PCA actually aware of the data loss and uh, still contains in the in the smaller amount of uh, variables it still contains the most of the information in the large data set okay so the idea of pca is simple so the idea is the reduce number of variables of the data set while preserving as much information as possible okay so in the principal component analysis, if you want to reduce the uh, number of variables, we we have some steps involved in. So step one is so standardize the data set. So standard scalar, you know that uh, we will fit the standard scalar into our data set. That's the first step, and then the st step two is in the PCA, we calculate the covariance matrix for the features in the data set actually what is covariance means so we have seen variance actually so variance is the spread of data we know that so what is covariance so covariance is so i will tell you first uh, variance okay variance is the measure of the uh, variation of a single random variable okay variance uh, uh, calculates the uh, spread of the data of one only one variable but in the covariance it, it it's involved uh, two variables in it okay whereas covariance is a measure of how much two random variables vary together okay so now we, we have uh, considered two variables here x and y so to calculate the covariance it uh, it is 1 by n minus 1 summation of i equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar and in multiply by y i minus y bar okay 
so we are considering two variables here x and y so this is what the covariance is and in the step three what we calculate is we calculate the eigenvalues and eigenvectors for the covariance matrix so what is eigenvalues and eigenvectors so eigenvectors to explain the eigenvectors we have the phrase called uh, the direction that doesn't change direction that was the eigenvectors actually so in eigenvectors when we are doing some transformations right so uh, at that time the eigenvector doesn't change the direction so that's why we are calculating here the eigenvectors okay so based on the egg and then eigenvalues based on that only we'll pick the principal components okay so initially in the principal component analysis what it does is uh, let's say you have a 10 features and we are giving 10 principal components then actually the principal component analysis algorithm tries to uh, fit most of the information in the first component actually okay in the first component act, uh, uh, has the most of the information and the some point, second component has the less uh, information than the first one so like that uh, uh, it, it goes for the all 10 uh, principal components okay so i will tell you what is eigen vector and eigen value is so we know that eigen vector is uh, the direction that, that that doesn't change direction okay so eigen vector of a matrix is a is a vector represented by a matrix x such that when x is multiplied with matrix a then the direction of the resultant matrix remains same as vector x okay and where a is any arbitrary matrix lambda are eigen values and x is an eigen vector corresponding to each eigen value okay so for a square matrix a uh, an eigen vector and eigen values makes this equation through that is av equal to lambda v so a is the matrix here v is the eigen vector lambda is the eigen value so when we multiply the matrix a with eigen vector it's equal to the multiplying the lambda with the eigen vector eigen value with the eigen vector okay so if you want to understand more about the eigen vector and eigen value i will show you on a website the math is fun in math is fun they have explained the eigen vector and eigen value so you can see here in this image so when you are doing some transformations right so the eigen vector is the white uh, axis here so here you can see so th that remains same but other uh, other axis are changing the direction right so you can see how we calculate the eigen vectors and eigen values here so if you want i will post the link here so i will send it in the chat you can see that okay so that's what the uh, eigen vectors and eigen value things is and in the step uh, step four i think so in the step four what we do is sort eigenvalues and their corresponding eigenvectors and ste in step five we pick k eigenvalues and form a matrix of eigenvectors and the step six the uh, final transformation of the original matrix that's it so it's the six steps involved in the uh, principal component analysis okay so now uh, we'll see how to implement the principal component analysis before that uh, let me start the spider but actually we have uh, more things on principal component analysis if you go and uh, check other uh, features of principal component analysis you will find um, uh, some noise filtering so we can use actually uh, principal component analysis you can use it for uh, noise filtering i will show you uh, in this video and we have uh, uh, two, uh, two, uh, wait, wait. Yeah, uh, to increase the performance of uh, the machine learning models, we use uh, principal component analysis. And to visualize uh, some data sets, when you have uh, more features, right, then you can't visualize because we have uh, more than two features so only we have two axis 
okay x and y but if you have more than uh, uh, two features then you can't visualize the data set so in that time we can use the principal component analysis and reduce the components as uh, two components and then you can visualize the data right so we can use uh, the principal component analysis for visualization data visualization and you can use it for uh, improving the performance of uh, machine learning model and then you can use the principal component analysis for noise filtering as well okay so let me create a new file uh, okay actually principal component analysis actually is not an uh, uh, machine learning algorithm it's simply a, a step you want to take before uh, creating the model that's it okay like the standard scale standard scalar we have now so like that we have a, a step for principal component analysis you need to just create a, a, a object of the principal component and you want to fit that into a, our data set and that will uh, transform the data set into number of components okay so first i will import the pandas and as uh, as pd and numpy okay so first we'll import this so what i will do is i will just uh, give you a demo of how the principal component analysis is working let me just copy this one it's just a random data okay so we have a, a random data is created x here so i'm going to fit the principal component analysis on that x data and convert the number of components into one and we'll transform into a new data set okay so it's the new data set and we'll do some visualization so I will, uh, first we have okay i want to import the matplotlib as well matplotlib okay so now in the first line what we created is we created a uh, object for the random state okay after creating the object for random state and now we are just doing some equation okay so just uh, in p dot dot we are uh, multiplying two matrices here and we are transforming it okay so what uh, we have the data set and i will run this line So you can see we have the data set here. So the range we have is two features, right? We have two features. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the principal component analysis and convert that uh, components to one. Okay. So, okay. So to do that, first you want to import the PCA. This line is just importing the PCA. So the PCA is inside the Escalon library decomposition module. And inside this, we have a class for PCA. And you want to call the PCA and give the parameter. So the parameter is number of components, okay? The resultant variable, uh, uh, how many components you want. So that's what you, you, uh, you want to specify here and you will create an object and you want to fit the object into the data set x here okay so this was the three lines and now we have these two lines right so the two lines what is it the xpca is nothing but the component if you do some transformation on the x you will get the principal component that's the xpca here if you inverse transform that you will get a new data set the same feature 
So in the new data set, you will have the same number of features, two features, and in the XPC, you will have only one feature because uh, we just we are transforming the X in, into the number of components here. So we'll we'll have the XPC. Uh, we have one values, one feature, and X new will have two features. Again, how the uh, original data set is like that. We have the new data set, but it's just uh, uh, a little bit uh, different from the new data, uh, original data set. So I will run these two lines. <coughs> okay, you can see in the XPCA we have only one feature because we have selected in components equal to one. And if I inverse transform that, you will get a new data set, the same number of features, but it's uh, a little bit different. If you visualize the uh, original and the new data set, so you will get the idea about the uh, principal component analysis now go to the plots you can see here so the blue blue points here right the spreaded points are the uh the original data set x here okay and now we have the orange color right orange color line here so because principal component analysis converts the data set into a linear con it's a linear conversion actually so that's why the data set here is a linear data you can see now if you apply the linear regression or uh, other algorithms, you will get a, a perfect line fitting on the data set, right? So, on that time, you will get a more accuracy. You will get more accuracy. So, this was the uh, concept of principal component analysis. I think visualizing this plot, you will get the idea about the principal component analysis. Okay, so now we'll try to apply this uh, uh, principal components on some other algorithms as well. So we have did before, right? So we'll just uh, try to improve that. Okay, so one more thing in the principal component analysis, it, it will work efficiently only when you have a linear type of data. Okay, so remember that. When you are doing principal common analysis, but it's not improving your accuracy, then we uh, that means your data is not a linear one. So that's what. Uh, okay. So now, uh, okay. So first we'll do for linear regression. We'll try this on linear regression, and we'll see. Okay, in linear regression, I think we got uh, a high accuracy, so uh, we can uh, ignore that. I think in multiple linear regression, maybe. Uh, what is the accuracy we got for that multiple linear regression? Oh, that's uh, 0 0.70, 70% accuracy. Now, let's try to fit principal component here. So, you want to fit the principal component after the standard scalar before the model creation okay so you want to fit that you need to import that first scale on dot i think that uh, decomposition right Okay, so in this case, see how it's data, how many features we have. Let me check data.info. I think we have 20 features, I think 19 features. Actually, we excluded the ID, date, and price. Okay, uh, ID, date only. Price also will. Uh, remove uh, so we'll get 17 features right so we have 17 features let me uh, reduce it to four four components okay and now you want to fit uh, on transform both will do on the one chart for training data right pca dot 
is CA dot fit to transform. For X test also, PCA dot transform. Okay. So before we got 0 0.70, now we have applied the principal component. Let's see what happens. Okay, I think we want to reduce the components. Zero two. I think it's not working for this type of data. <coughs> no, I think for this data it's not working. So let me try with a different data. Yeah, sometimes it will not work. Okay. For logistic regression. Okay, so we have uh, selected the features using the correlation method, right? Okay. We we'll select the features with the principal component analysis. Okay, and uh, then components will put three here. Okay. So you can see we got 83% uh, when I change the components accuracy also will change so with four components you can see we got uh, 86 and let me try with five components so it's 0 0.9 so like that uh, it will change based on the components it will try with random forest with the same KC house data and that means it will not work okay for some data it will work some data it will not work okay no problem so now what we do is uh, so we know that how to apply the PCA no I will tell you the noise filtration right noise filtering technique how the PCA is doing okay so for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different data set that is actually a digits 
is an images okay this is very small images 32 by 30 uh, not 22 28 i think 28 by 28 image two dimensional and its digits is nothing like uh, one to nine digits handwritten okay so you can uh, load the digits data set in the sklearn library the data set model we have so inside that you will have a function for importing the digits data so and then it will uh, load the digits data here okay so now we got the data and after uh, getting the data i will create a function okay i have created this function so what this function actually does is it will plot the images that's it okay so we have the data image data here and it will try to plot the images using the matplotlib so so the first line you can see fig comma access equal to plt dot subplot 4 comma 10 figure size is 10 comma 14 so it's nothing but we have the uh, a function called subplots in the matplotlib so subplots is nothing but it's used to plot uh, the plots side by side okay so in one plot you will have uh, many plots so that's what the use of subplots here here we are giving four comma ten right four uh, four rows ten columns uh, i think yeah four rows uh, ten columns uh, yeah and the size of the uh, plot is 10 comma 4 okay and we have given subplot keywords x sticks none and uh, y sticks none so what is this is actually in in other plots you can see in the x and y axis we have the scale right so like minus 2 minus 1 0 the values uh, we have right so if you put x sticks colon uh, empty list and y sticks call an empty list it won't show the uh, axis here so an um, axis uh, values it, in, it won't show so that what uh, because we are having some images right so why we need the scale okay and then we have a parameter grid spec keyword dict h space equal to 0 0.1 and w space equal to 0 0.1 so what is this is it's just some keywords to set the space between the subplots so horizontal space and vertical sorry i think height and the weight with i think okay uh, so the space between uh, the uh, plots so that is 0 0.1 here <coughs> okay and then so that's what the, these two lines is the three lines okay and then here what we are doing is for i comma ax in enumerate axis start flat so for every axis in the subplots we are going to plot a image okay that's why we are iterating through the axes okay and in the every axis we'll put a image there okay so that means four rows ten columns so we'll have uh, so if for every axis you will uh, plot an image there okay so that's why we are using an im show im show is used to uh, plot the image okay so the image you can get it from the data so this here our data okay and then in the data of the eye for every images we reshape the images to 8 by 8 okay to make it more smaller and we are using c map equal to binary so the color we are using the uh, binary color that, that means black and white okay uh, i think we don't want this so, okay so now we uh, we'll just create this uh, function okay now we created the function now we're going to call the function plot digits with given the data dot data inside the data dot data we have the data of the images okay if i run this line you will get the 
plots here take some time okay you can see four rows 10 columns right so you have plotted the uh, images so we don't have the axis and the space between the plots is 0 0.1 okay okay now what we are doing is we are adding some noise to the data okay adding some random noise on the on the digits data set okay this is what the two lines here we are np.random.seed42 so we are setting a seed uh, because uh, in the random no if you run every time it will get a uh, different different data if you set the seed uh, that means uh, if you run uh, many times the result will be the same one okay now we added a noise to the uh, image data now we have the noisy data here in the variable noisy now we are going to plot the noisy data right So you can see the noise here it's the original image and this is the noisy image so we have noise and using the principal component analysis you are, we are going to filter the noise and make this image as how the uh, original images look like okay so to do that first we'll import the pca right and we are we're creating an object for pca with given 0.6 what is the 0 0.6 is so 0 0.6 is the uh, a covariant uh, variance actually 0 0.6 percent variance of the uh, that means you can say 0 0.6 percent uh, or 60 percent of the features needs to be used right 60 percent of the uh, data and pca dot fit into the noisy data okay let me first let me try with 0 0.5 and then we'll okay so we are creating the pca object and we are fitting into the noisy data so after fitting the noisy data we are going to transform the noisy data into a reduced image okay using the reduced image you can get a original image but a little bit different what we done in the previous here right so the same thing we are doing here okay so first we have fitted the pca into the original data so the original data is now a noisy data okay and then we are calculating the principal components of the x data so that's why we are transforming the x into the principal components now the x pca here is the reduced data okay and we have a new data inverse transform of the uh, x pca okay so now there is some difference like we know that we have already plotted here there is some difference between the original data and the uh, new data right x new data so so the same thing is happening here so we are uh, up, uh, fitting the pca into the noisy data and transforming the noisy data into the reduced image and then using the reduced image we are creating a new data okay so again the original image like that but it's not the original image uh, a little bit uh, uh, the difference is there we will see that i will run this okay now this is the result in the image so you can see this is the original image okay we have uh, uh, loaded from the scale and library and then we are added a noisy there and this is a noisy data here now using this noisy data i'm going to filter this noisy data and, and i'm trying to uh, and, and, and i'm trying to uh, create this image as how the original images look like so and then i'm applying the principal components and then uh, the result is like this okay so it's uh, yeah, let me try with 0 0.6 uh, that will be more clear
so now it is a little bit clear now right when compared to previous one okay so this is how the principal component analysis is used to uh, filter the noise okay if you want to visualize the data set you can visualize let's say you have a uh, iris data okay so in iris data what we have we have four features sepal length sepal width petal length petal width but if you try to plot the plot the uh, iris data only you you can't you can use uh, two features right so whether that is sepal length or sepal width or petal length or petal width uh, <coughs> whatever you like and if i want to plot the whole data how can you how can you do that so you can do with the principal component analysis what it does is uh, will will reduce the dimensionality of the data and then will come uh, and then we will convert it to two features right two principal components and now we have the two features we can visualize the whole data by just these two features so i will just uh, demonstrate you we'll command this and we'll import the iris data okay so we can import it with the scalon dot data set import i load iris okay so now uh, we, we need to call the function load iris and it will give you the data now with the use of this data we need to create a data frame using the using the class inside the pandas the data frame class here you want to give the data that's inside the data parameter and you want to give the column names so the parameter is columns equal to data dot feature names okay so and then uh, we will get the data frame of the features no it doesn't has the class feature so you want to add it manually so that is inside the data dot class oh not class that is actually target target okay so and then you will get the data set okay i will open the df data frame so now this is the data frame here for the iris data we have sepal and sepal width and petal length petal width okay so if we want to visualize uh, i can able to only plot two features at a time right so you can plot whether sepal length or sepal width or you can plot petal length petal width or sepal length petal width like that but what about i want to plot the whole data right the whole data i want to plot using the principal component analysis you can do that so how can you do that by reducing the number of features okay so now what we do is we'll just uh, apply the principal component okay okay first we do the uh, standard scalar and then we'll do that so we'll take x variable and y variable so x is data dot sorry df dot lock so all the rows except the last column and we'll convert into numpy arrays values and y is the class column sorry target column oh that's class okay cannot do slicing index indexer minus 1 sorry i, I want to use i lock
okay now we have the x features now we want to reduce the feature x using the principal component before you want to standardize the first step is standardizing the data Okay, now you want to apply the principal component. Now I will create an object for PCA and I will get number of components as 2. Okay, in resultant we will get 2 features. Okay, you want to fit that uh, into the data set x and we'll get a new data set x underscore new equal to pca dot transform okay now we have the new feature we can uh, just plot with the scatter plot scatter of the x underscore new so we have two features right so first we'll plot x axis as the first feature the index is zero and second feature is index one okay so you want to give colon comma zero because you want all the rows uh, the selected column zero and the, and then uh, with the axis y is selected column one Okay, first column and then we'll give the color for the data set so the color is the class actually so you can give C as Y okay and we'll show the plot that's it So you can see this is the data set here. So we are visualizing the whole data set in the uh, only using the two features. So we have reduced into two features and we, we, uh, we are visualizing in the using the two features. Okay. So this is how you can use the principal component analysis for visualizing the large data set also. Okay. So I think that's it for principal component. So any doubts you have, you can ask me. Any doubts? Guys, have any doubts? Okay, I hope no doubts. So then we'll wind up this session. So we are bigdatahandson.com. Our website uh, bigdatahandson.com. This is day 27. We have seen the principal component analysis. 
and uh, yeah day 27 principal compound analysis tomorrow we'll continue the same uh, dimensionality re reduction algorithms other two algorithms like linear discriminant analysis and uh, kernel pca so this also the algorithms of dimensionality reduction only okay from day after tomorrow we'll uh, end up with machine learning actually so from day 29 the last of uh, the machine learning we will see model selection and boosting so from this we will end up for the machine learning and then we'll start deep learning from 30 okay so all the videos we'll upload in our youtube channel bigdatahandson.com so if you subscribe to our channel uh, you will get all the updates here so you can see we have uploaded the videos okay so we'll see tomorrow bye